I have a basic question for you. What are your sources of authority? Usually people have various sources of authority. Like, for instance, friends, family, your critical thinking, or just your inner strength. Other sources of authority can be a sacred text, the Bible, for instance, or a spiritual leader you would like to follow, or religious tradition in general. Or it is something not that obvious, something like an algorithm, maybe. You may ask now, what, does the, what has the algorithm to do with my life? Well, it has some touch to it. It may help you to find out what to watch on Netflix, gives you suggestions on what to buy on Amazon. And in terms of human beings, we are bundles of algorithms. In general, an algorithm is a methodical set of steps to calculate something, resolve problems, and to reach decisions. It's the biological signaling and mechanism that brings life to living things and to keep them alive. Sounds kind of odd, right? But I'll come back to that later. So, if you want to understand communication and decision-making in a team sports environment, you have to follow the past. And therefore, I would like to introduce you to you my old friend, Bertie Mee. In the year of 1966, he was manager for the Brit British football club Arsenal London FC. And his job circled around a bunch of different areas. So, on one hand, he was sports director, which included fixing the players' contracts with all the extra clauses and the recruitment of players. On the other hand, he was the head coach of the team. So his responsibility was to organize and structure training on a daily, weekly, monthly, and in general, seasonal business. As the head coach, you also stand by your team during the competitions. Again, you may ask yourself, when does this guy ever take a rest? But not my old friend, Bertie Me. <laughs> he was a physiotherapist as well, and as the myth goes, he also treated themselves after their exposure to the games and training, just to get to know more information out of them. To sum it up, he was a hell of a one-man show. <laughs> Since we are in Austria, there are more different examples to this. Ernst Tappel, for instance, was a tremendously successful coach. And with those strong personalities, you might think those are the type of managers who would say, it's either my way or the highway. But don't get fooled by that. <laughs> what they both had in common was, that they were masters in human interaction, masters in human communication, and understanding human behavior. And uh, what would they do to get their team on a micro and a macro level to act in concert? Well, rather simple. They would identify common needs of their squad and on the individuals and ask simple questions. Doesn't sound really scientific, right? <laughs> but here's some science to back it up. The famous psychologist, Carl Rogers, who agreed with the assumptions of the well-known Maslow pyramid, added a factor of growth to it. So what he was suggesting is that you should put a human being or an athlete into an environment where they could find some touch of genius, gen geniusness to, um, to get some open-mindedness and some self-disclosure some touch of acceptance, to be seen with unconditional positive regard, and some kind of empathy to being fully understood and fully listened to. In general, the organism has an underlying tendency and striving to actualize, maintain, and enhance the experience in organism. To sum it up, my friends Ernst and Bertie were tremendous in creating such an environment and coming up with good communication and decision-making tools. Cool. <laughs> Nowadays, it is all a little bit different. Besides human interaction, you have a different layer, a more transparent one, a more objective layer, based on data. But how should, how should that look like? Well, to give you an idea, I guide you through a daily routine of a football player, which could look like this. So, your alarm rings in the morning. What's the first thing you're going to do? 
Absolutely right. You strip a heart rate belt around your chest and measure your heart rate variability. <laughs> uh, a parameter in a somewhat complex way linked to stress and recovery. Next thing you need to do, you take your smartphone, open an app, and send some information to your physiotherapists that they get some information about if you feel already some, a little bit off in your body, a little bit tight, a little bit sore, that they get some overall picture about it. When you finally dressed yourself and you come to the training center and you want some breakfast, craving for your first coffee of the day, you have to wait a little bit because first you want to check your weight over the course of, uh, because you want to know if over the course of time you maybe gained too much, lost too much. So you have to figure out how it is today. Next thing, one person comes to you and wants to find out about your biochemical muscular stature. So you have to so you have to be ready that you have a, uh, a little blood sample would be, would be drawn out of your earlobe or your index finger to measure creatine, creatine kinase, a marker that tells us about muscular damage in general. Finally, coffee and breakfast time. Yay. <laughs> Will not last too long because you have now go off to training preparation. And what that means is that somebody needs to know about your neuromuscular system if it's fast or slow today. So what you're gonna do, you will conduct a jump test. And by finding out the ratio between the contraction time and the flight time of your jump, one would know if, you, if he could stress you hard during training or take it easy today. Besides that, you will take some muscular examinations like the strength of your outside of your thighs, inside of your thighs, backside of your thighs. <sighs> but you made it through the assessment finally, and you can go to the pitch now to do the thing you love, play football but you cannot just go with your training equipment on. You will again put your heart rate belt around your chest to get some live feedback, how your cardiovascular system would cope with the stress of training. And you put some little GPS unit into your back that one could figure out how much you would run throughout the course of a training session, how fast you would run, how many sprints you would conduct, and how many times you got exposed to accelerations and decelerations every day, every day the same. But now the thing comes, the science and the research doesn't always apply. What data does in general nowadays is, it always asks questions, but it, but it rather confirms. So what you've le been left alone with is you have two sources. On the one hand, human interaction. On the other hand, transparency through data. To sum it up, as complexity rises, Precise statements lose meaning, and meaningful statements lose precision. Doesn't matter too much anyways, because the future could draw a totally different picture. To give you two analogies that may help you to decode what's about to go on, we have on the one hand deep water problems, and on the other hand big wave problems. So it's entirely possible that water may be deep. But if you train to swim in a depth of around two meters, it is no problem for you to swim in water with a depth of 20 meters. It is neither more challenging nor more difficult. It just feels different. It's also a good point to remind yourself that you as a coach are still in charge of the decision making. Even though you have different layers of communication tools, you are responsible for taking the decision. But on the other hand, there are big wave problems. So, if you're about to, um, to ride a two meter high wave, and now you find yourself on a tropical island and you see those 20 meter high waves and you prepare yourself to ride them, it's also a good time to, to settle down a little bit and rethink again. Because riding bigger waves isn't just riding small waves with more effort. It's a totally different interaction. And this time, it is not just in your head. And the biggest wave is about to come because we will trust the algorithm. Because the firm belief that your choice of, that your individual choice of will, your intuition, isn't natural at all. For over a thousand years, people believed that sources of authority came from divine sources rather than from human heart. Only over the last few decades, 
it shifted from those divine sources to flesh and blood humans. And it's about to shift again from humans to algorithms. And the algorithm will treat everything brutally rational. It will tell you feelings are just biochemical signals that, will not, that are all humans use to quickly calculate the probabilities of survival and reproduction. Emotions are not your free choice, they are just calculations. <laughs> In general, it will look like this. Our most important decisions will not be based on our feelings of illness and well-being or the informed predictions of a coach, but on the comput computation power of external devices which will know your athletes much better than they know themselves. Within a few decades, big data algorithm, algorithms informed by biometrical sensors will know what's going on inside your body even, though, uh, even long before you even feel or know that something's going wrong. And they will have perfect answers. And they will give you perfect answers for how to treat yourself, how to change your diet, how to change your sleep, and how to change your daily routines, custom built for your unique physique, DNA, and personality. The critical invention to it will be the biometric sensor with, with, a, with athletes will wear them even outside or inside their bodies, and they will convert biochemical signaling into electronic information that then will be used by calculation machines to be stored and analyzed. And giving enough biometrical data and enough calculation power, they will totally hack your desires, your behaviors, your physiology, and what is about to go on in your body. Basically, they will know who you are. Sounds crazy again, right? But we are not too far away from that scenario in the end. <laughs> to be honest, the algorithm will always be perfect due to faulty programming, muddled goal definitions, and not enough data. It will be off sometimes. But it has, to, but it has not to be perfect at all. In the end, it just has to be better than the average human being in decision making. So in the end, it's just an empirical matter. If the algorithm knows better what's about to go on, then the athletes themselves, authority will shift to it. And there is only one final question left. Whom will the algorithm report to? A coach? Or to the player directly? Since no human action will be needed anymore, right? But if you're familiar with the movie of Matrix, you have to decide for yourself if you want to swallow the blue pill or the red pill. Thank you very much. <laughs>